Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 56 where you email me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net and I will try to answer them here if all possible. First question comes in, it is called Elon Musk, Mark. SpaceX, not NASA. What keeps this man from being honest? And that's from Sarah Perry. A $20 billion. How's that? That's what keeps him from being honest. That is his current net worth. You can look him up if you get a chance. He currently owns Tesla, which he did not found. And he currently owns SpaceX, which does nothing. He made most of his money, or I say his early money, because he was one of the majority investors in PayPal before it went atomic. So he made a huge amount of money off of that and then just started doing other things with his money. But it, basically, when you have $20 billion, anytime you open your mouth, you create headlines, period. Uh, although it's interesting with him. It's not like Warren Buffett, who also is, owns billions and billions of dollars. When Warren Buffett talks about stuff he usually talks about things that are in his wheelhouse which is financial situation uh, investments basically but elon musk even though he's got a bachelor's degree in physics i don't think he's got a master's definitely doesn't have a phd in anything uh why why is he on panels uh same sort of thing he's in the sort of the same boat as bill nye is where it, and and what kills me about elon i don't want to dwell on this first one too much what kills me about Elon is that when he makes headlines, his his time his timetables are so aggressive they are beyond ridiculous. Remember, he's he's the guy that says he's going to take two tourists around the moon and back uh, on a round trip uh, in 2018, and he said that at the beginning of 2017 or the middle of 2017. That and he says, oh yeah, we're going to colonize Mars by 2030 and all this other crap. Literally every time he opens up his mouth. The, the the media just says, oh, we need to talk about this. And, and they just print whatever he says. So he's just basically pulling headlines out of his ass. And I can't wait to see what his next one is. So, yeah, I'd love to get that guy in a room. And even if it wasn't on camera and really go at him about a lot of different things. Because, honestly, he's just wasting his time. But fine, he, he makes uh, electric cars for the wealthy. And he has a space program that does nothing. Why are why are people gravitating towards him? Because he's got $20 billion. Anyway, moving on. Let's get out of that. And the next one is called YouTube Video on Flat Earth. Mark, your videos on clues regarding Flat Earth are amazing. That's why I am mailing you. I would like to know more why the government is afraid of letting people discover the edge. Is this all about money or is it because it makes many science concepts BS and forces everyone to admit there is a higher power? Why preserve a big lie which takes a whole lot of cooperation from a different organization? Why are they hiding flat earth? Well, you answered your own question in the very first part. It's it's not just about money. In fact, this this is the one thing that's actually above money. I mean, of course, money is part of it, but the the bigger thing is hiding. The, you you can't be the ultimate authority if you're not the ultimate authority. And by that I mean, if you're in the most powerful organization here, you can't admit that there's somebody bigger than you that built the place. And that's what we're really talking about here. Because if there's a creator, if this place is an enclosed structure, that means it was built by somebody and it wasn't built by your, your organization. And anytime you admit to a higher power, it diminishes your credibility. It diminishes your authority. Uh, same thing with the Air Force. They know there's aircraft up there that are better than any of their fighter planes, but they can't really admit to it because you can't rule the sky if you're not ruling the sky. So thank you for that. This one it's called, It's All Happening, Isn't It? Okay. Dear Mark, congratulations on all the press and interviews you get on Flat Earth Truth. I've absolutely loved listening to several of them. And yes, there is an outstanding number of closet Flat Earthers out there. I bring it up every chance I get and more people are on board than you think. Yep. Now, not to buzz, not to be a buzzkill, but it all seems to be that the power evil elite 
are scrambling around the clock to combat all this traction you and other representatives of the Flat Earth community have sparked. Do you think this recent SpaceX, eh, here we go again, exhibition over California seems like the beginning of whatever they're trying to cut you guys off at the pass, so to speak? I'm thinking everything that is free on the internet and the internet itself will be shut down or perhaps, as you say, Flat Earth is just the lid covering some other deeply sinister plan. Optimistically, I pray each day we will all be free again and the world will collectively shift. Thus, we all begin to actually live as we should. A big thanks from me. Take care, take care Mark. Keep it flat. Geneva with a J. And yeah, the SpaceX thing again, uh, every time they, they launch a rocket, it's a bunch of crap. In fact, the, the rocket they just launched recently, supposedly a military payload, and it's like, oh, we lost it. And uh, it's like, okay, two things there, because you could go two different forks in the road. You could say, well, they didn't really lose it because it was a, it was a secret uh, government satellite. And so therefore it just, every time a, a secret government satellite goes up, it's like, well, the mission must have failed. Therefore it's an extra level of secrecy if you believe that road. But the other road is like, they're just shooting stuff up in the sky and, and they're not doing anything with it. It's, but it, but it hurts them to say that they lost the satellite because remember he's supposedly sending people around the moon and back on the Falcon X booster with a capsule that's yet untested, even though NASA in their video, Orion Trial by Fire, says that they can't even send manned people for tests because the radiation problem is so bad. So how did Elon Musk and SpaceX solve the radiation problem when NASA says that it's currently unsolvable? Uh, how, how did that happen? People, uh Stop believing everything you read from mainstream, please. It's killing me. All right, this one's called Chicago Skyline. <laughs> nice. I, I, got, I didn't even read this. I just saved it and never even glanced at it. Hi, Rob. <laughs> Meaning they were right. They're right. It's Rob Skiba. And this is not the first time this has happened to me. Uh, I've gotten emails for Matt. I've gotten emails for... Uh, uh, Eric Dubay, and now Rob Skiba. Fantastic. Hi, Rob. I think the reason the lake is flat is because it is surrounded by land. Unlike the ocean, the water levels out like a big water level. Cheers, John. And I'm going to answer this question, and it's from John Sebastian Roy. No, no. Water is water. Yes, I know. You have 3% salt solution in the world's oceans versus the fresh water. But no, water is water. It, it acts the same way, which is it levels out. Yes, when you have salt solution, it's better conductivity when it comes to electricity. But no, water, it doesn't matter if it's a lake or an ocean, water is level. Interesting, interesting thought, though. I've never heard anyone say that. Okay, this one's called After Listening to the Interview with Thomas Retired Air Force. Mark, I just want to thank you for these videos. For the first set video I watched of yours, the Flat Earth Clues 1 through 12 that led me to email you. There were things in that video that I noticed, Tower of Babel, that pointed to biblical references, but I wasn't sure if you were a believer of God or not. Yes, I am. Very much so. I absolutely believe in higher power. After listening to this interview and hearing you profess to being a Christian and hearing your story about how the clues came to you by seemingly divine intervention, I just want you to know how much comfort that brings to me. At first, I thought to myself, why wouldn't that be a forefront of your presentation? But then it occurred to me that you would not be able to reach those who were non-believers because they would dismiss you because of your faith. You don't need to point them to God. Pointing them to this truth and helping them realize it inevitably points them to God. Of course, you know this already. I, however, do want to thank you for being open about your faith because at least for me and my story, that is what helped to make it real to me. I have always believed in God. Sorry, the screen just reverted. New email system I'm dealing with. And every once in a while, it'll pop back to the main email list. Uh, let's see. Of course, thank you because at least I've always believed in God. But the truths we are taught and that are even accepted by the church that teaches us keeps God at such an extreme distance that it's hard to stay, stay focused, hard to imagine his presence. This new truth brings him so much closer. Suddenly, he isn't just with me in spirit, but now also in reality, right on top of me, so to speak. 
looking straight down, not from the outside of some imaginably huge and ever-expanding vast universe that is itself trillions upon trillions upon trillions of light years wide already, but now suddenly much more up close and intimate physically as well as spiritually. Thank you for helping to bring his closeness into my awareness. The earth is still so big and I so small, but how much closer and more intimate my God seems to me with a feeling that if I go out and stare at the sky long enough, I just might see him. With gratitude, Bobby Joe Merrick. Awesome. That's really nice. And good. I, I couldn't have said it better myself. It's great. This one's called Thanks for the Video. Hi, Mark. It only stands to reason in understanding the lies, deceptions, and evil of the globalist cabal that their greatest lie would be the deception of our world, flat and not globe. While it was easy for me to accept the economic and financial manipulations enslaving people to debt, the control of the technological advances used against people in massive surveillance programs used to ensnare people for purposes of control. But I scoffed at those who kept telling me the world was flat, watching videos and hearing logical and rational discussions, providing evidence that indeed our world is flat and very much as described in Genesis, has brought me full circle. While I can understand the market manipulations, preserving the globalist wealth and concealment of technologies, I can un understand why would we be so deceived in believing our world is a spinning globe within a universe of other spinning planets. Why the deception? Why so much effort to make sure the truth was not told? What possibly is the globalist cabal's motivation in perpetuating this lie? The answers to those questions are what's holding me back from completely rejecting the notion of Earth as a spinning blue orb. Your video is quite informing. I look forward to your response. Thank you and a Merry Christmas. Regards, Shirley Thompson. And Shirley, I will direct you right back to the clues. If you haven't watched the Flat Earth Clues in their entirety, please go watch them. And you don't know where that channel is, just type in Flat Earth Clues into Google or YouTube, and my channel is just my name, Mark K. Sargent as is. And the K stands for Kendall. For those of you wondering, it doesn't stand for kill uh, or kill them all or whatever. I don't know. What, what other good K words are there? Kick? Right. The uh, K-E-N-D-A-L-L. -L. This one's called A Few Good Men. Colonel Jessup makes an entire flight disappear. Greetings, Mark. I had mentioned in the past that Qantas might be using supersonic jets disguised as regular passenger planes to accomplish the new direct flights in the Southern Hemisphere. It may also be possible that those flights simply don't exist and their crew and passengers are merely paid actors like the NASA astronauts. I'm reminded of a line from a few good men when a missing witness shows up in Tom Cruise's car, informing him that Jack Nicholson's character, Colonel Jessup, has ordered the Code Red. Cruz's character responds to the additional news that there was no flight scheduled for the murdered Marine with, with incred, incredulity, incredulity, I don't use that word much, I'll have to work on that one. You mean to tell me he can make an entire flight disappear? Markinson responds, you don't get into the position Jessup has without learning how to sidestep a few landmines. The movie reveals what all of us intuitively know. Men in power can easily falsify major events and get away with it. Now, multiply that exponentially, and that is probably the situation with the Qantas flights. If you are the powers that be and you are already faking massive space programs in multiple countries, what is one more con? Comparatively speaking, paying off key officials at an airline to fake direct flights is much easier task than running multiple space programs. Moreover, bribing scientists to falsify 24-hour daylight in Antarctica would also be comparatively easy if you, are, if you have already gone to such great lengths to keep things hidden. All of the players involved would only need to be told that it is a matter of national security, and they did not need to know why. I do agree that the fewer people who know the secret, the better, speaking from the standpoint of the authority. However, maybe we are underestimating the groups needed to maintain the secret. Presumably, the authority probably figured out that things such as a few token direct flights or phony Antarctic footage would be necessary to respond to any clever person who might someday become suspicious if those of those small inconsist inconsistencies. As you have said before, they leave nothing to chance. Anyway, just a few quick thoughts I wanted to share. Keep up the good work. Regards, Jeff. You are very welcome, Jeff, and thank you for those well-thought-out remarks. This one's called Santa Tracker. 
Hi Mark, I just signed in to NORAD to track Santa for my girls, and for the first time I realized that we need a Flat Earth Santa tractor. If someone listening could make that happen for next year, that would be great. I feel I only have one year left. My girls, who are 9 and 11 years old, are aware we are most likely not on a globe. I, You are so lucky, by the way, that your girls, 9 and 11, still believe in Santa. I was disenchanted at age 6 when I found the letters that I wrote to Santa in the top drawer of my parents' dresser. Sad. Uh, this makes school homework fun and confusing at their age. My oldest commented that it should not take Santa as long to de deliver the gifts. Merry Christmas from Orlando, Florida. Lisa Kostidakis. Kostidakis. Cool. Thank you, Lisa. And uh, good luck with your girls. And hopefully somebody will make a flatter Santa tracker. This one's called... Room 237. Mark, I don't know what to do to get your attention. Loved listening to your stuff, just listening to your 2015 talk with Jaron, and what do I have to do, buddy? Can I give you this? Kubrick's production of The Shining. Here's a little interesting fact that I've never heard mentioned. If in Stephen King's book, The Shining, it wasn't 237, the room number was 217. Does that ring your chimes at all? Yes, yes, of course. I've, I've watched all the documentaries on uh, Stanley Kubrick's uh, Room 237 and his production of The Shining. Mark, I love what you do. The Flat Earth Clues were my second stop after Eric Dubay's stuff, and I've gone to a straight diet of Mark and Jaron. You guys rule. Anyway, have reached out a few times. I'm a bit disappointed with the lack of response. Best regards, Steve Chandler. And I will, you know what, I will save this email off into my to-do pile, and I will write him back. Obviously, I, for whatever reason, he's not listening to my Q&A stuff. Or maybe he is, but hopefully he catches this one. But I'll write and I'll tell him, look, I read this on Q&A 56. This one's called Club Talk, Winky Face. Okay. This, hi, Mark. I'm Mike Gunn. Oh, great name. Mike Gunn with G-U-N-N. -G and I'm from Toronto, Canada, and I'm totally a believer. Funny, when I was a kid, I thought the world was flat and my mother laughed at me. I've watched a few videos now and yet haven't heard anything about seeing the moon during the day. I've seen this almost every day of my life, and if the sun is on the other side of the earth as a moon, it's impossible to see the moon during the day at any time. I've never believed in divine power until recently. It all makes sense. So only questions I have is what do I do now? What's next? I'm going to be going to church and try to open up other people's eyes. Enjoy your holidays, Mike. Uh, yeah, Mike. What to do next? Spread the word. Uh, you know, be of course be careful. Don't necessarily alienate alienate friends and family unless you really don't care that much. Uh, but it's it, you know spreading the word. That's that's the most important part right now because we we live in a media oriented society. Social media, media everywhere, on your phone, on your computer at home, uh, your television, uh, it, it's it's everywhere. So, you know, trying to saturate the media is what we're doing. So whatever feels comfortable to you, whatever your specialty is, that's what I recommend at this point. This next one's called, what is this one called? Do I have a title for this? Survival Guide and Flat Earth Orthodoxy. Okay. Hi, Mark. Please don't mention my name or contact info on air, but feel free to read the email itself on your show. Perfect, That's exactly what you're supposed to do. If you don't want me to read the email, put that somewhere in the beginning, not at the end. I love what you did here. Thanks for reading my previous email about Flat Earth Orthodoxy, discussing the Orthodox Christian Church connection to ancient cosmology, Antarctica, the Book of Enoch, and the Dome church temple architecture. I think there is a growing number of people in the Orthodox Christian community who are aware of the ancient teachings on cosmology for anyone interested in learning more. I highly recommend reacting the hex a hexameron. I'll spell it for you. H E X A E M E R O N by Saint Basil and Genesis Creation and Early Man by Orthodox monk Seraphim Rose. Seraphim Rose also has an amazing book on the other big conspiracy, The Soul After Death, a comprehensive presentation of the other world and the soul's departure. I'm also requesting a copy of your survival guide. Thank you again for all of your good work. Peace, Anonymous. I have his name, but I'm not going to read it. 
Cool. Thank you for that. And yes, I did send him a copy of the survival guide, which is free. By the way, all you have to do is email me, put it somewhere in the title. Survival guide. I want survival guide. Whatever it is. You don't even have to put any text in. Just put it in the title. And I will send it to you. It's only two megs. It's about 100 pages long. And it's about how you and yours can survive during a long-term power outage without hardly doing anything. If you're lazy enough to not put a case of water and some canned food and some flashlights with some batteries. Not saying you have to buy guns, but those three things. Water, food, light sources. Usually a good thing. This one's called One Sentence to Speak Volumes. Mark, hi, just wondering if you still answer questions or take information on this site as one video I saw was from 2015. If so, I thought I would give you this one. The Bible, Matthew 4, 8. One sentence can speak volumes. Good point. And a picture is worth a thousand words, right? Have a very Merry Christmas. Christ is always the reason for the season. Thank you for what you do. Feel free to send a return email. And that's from Stacy. And yes, I will send her an email because she was one of the people. Remember, most of my view, I shouldn't say most, at least half of the people that, that would get exposed to Flat Earth Clues are responding to mirrors of Flat Earth Clues. The, the two biggest ones, Under the Dome, full documentary, and They're Hiding God with the Greatest Lie Ever with millions of hits. But... It, they're not had. They have nothing to do with my site, and it's fine. You know, you guys can do it yourself. You can take my clues and put it up on your thing, and and get the nickels for it. But uh, people watch that video, and then they they think that that I've never put anything else out because they think that's my channel. Uh, luckily, luckily though, a lot of people they get intrigued enough with flat Earth, they just type in flat Earth into YouTube, and eventually they'll find me. But some don't, like that person right there. This one's called New Flat Earth Website, DomeRadio.com. Hey, Mark, read on q and I sent you an email a while back asking if you could repost your videos and others as audio only on a website, and it is now online at DomeRadio.com. I'm not looking for any notoriety, but feel free to link back to me. This is something I want to do for myself and my family, but it's out there for people to use. Thanks again, and I hope you are having a good holiday uh, from where... It's cold and flat in Canada, Jason. And yeah, you know what? If he wants the audio files for some of my stuff, I have got a whole bunch of audio files. I'm gonna send it to him. I'll put together a few and uh, see what he can see what he can do with it. Going into my to-do pile. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark, I just watched a video, and although I can say I agree with most of it in the video, there was a black gentleman. He, when describing Flat Earth, states that Earth is flat and that there is no space and this is it and we are just slaves on this Flat Earth with no space. Then, not a few minutes later, he states there is a creator and that we are just hurling through space. So which is it, space or no space? I, okay, one, I can't, I can't tell you who exactly the black gentleman was. I mean, there's quite a few people in the community that are, that are black. But as far as space versus no space, I believe in no space. Meaning, why would there have to be space? If you can fake space, like we do in a planetarium, why does there have to be space? So for me, no. Uh, enclosed, pressurized system and whatever's outside of this thing isn't, isn't space like we are told. I think it's completely different, like a, uh, an unknown dimension, an un unlimited dimension. How's that? This one's called George Norrie and Connie Interview. Greetings, Mark Sargent. If you're still up for it, I would like a copy of the George Norrie Interview. Thanks so much, and Merry Christmas, Penny. And yeah, if anybody wants, because as you know, one of the few people, one of the few interviews that I can't repost. I posted most of them. I didn't post any from the conference because those were, were group things. They, yeah, they interviewed me, but they also interviewed a whole bunch of people, so they were kind of um, composites. But when it comes to the Coast to Coast thing, they will absolutely copyright strike you if you try to put up Coast to Coast interviews. I don't know why. Yeah, I know it's a paid site on their thing, but man, they're real sticklers about it. And and I didn't I didn't toy with them at all. They made me sign a disclosure agreement saying that I would not repost it. And I didn't. As a matter of fact, I went so far as to make a trailer for it, which didn't have me talking to anybody. It was just me talking right we are now saying, hey, just so you know, Coast to Coast is a paid site. And you gotta do it. And they even copyright struck that. The intern was an idiot. He wasn't even looking. It's like, oh, I'm going to strike it. It's only 60 seconds long. A bunch of crap. So I wrote back. It was one of the few times I didn't use fair use and said, look, 
morons <laughs> like fire your intern because the thing has literally nothing to do with literally the intern just read the title and he says well it's got to be the you know and you saw that thumbnail with george nori's picture on it and they can't get you for a thumbnail unless it's like pornographic so and it wasn't with george no that would have been bad so anyway the the point was if in wow taking a long time to get back to my point which is if anyone wants the George Norrie interview from Coast to Coast, you can just email me and say, hey, I want the Coast to Coast stuff, and I'll send you the one that I did with George and the one I did with Connie just recently because I've done two of them. And they're both pretty good. But I'll send it to you through WeTransfer because the email caps out at like 25 megs, and the audio, audio files are still pretty big. All right, this one is called Hello. Hello, Mark. I came across your videos and interview on Breakfast Show weeks ago here in the UK. Ooh, okay. Uh, what he's talking about is Good Morning uh, Britain, which was the equivalent of Good Morning America, which I did over there. And yeah, it was me talking to Terry Virts and Piers Morgan and uh, one of the other hosts on that show. And it was what it was. They tied my hands as best they could. But the fact that I was on it at all, I was as happy as I could be. Uh, anyway, just wanted to share a few thoughts with you and a few questions. If you could please reply, I am throwing these at you, so please bear with me. One, do we live in a puddle? I think we live in a huge flat plain whose shape and structure we, the general public, do not know. The ice barrier makes sense, fits well with great floods in the past, and why temperatures increase and ice wall melting can be deadly for us. It also makes sense in geology, Pangaea getting split up into the continents and floating around. If we are on a puddle on a thick ice sheet, then are there puddles next to us? Where is the nearest puddle and does every anything live? Wow, there's a lot of questions here. Uh, anything live there if we are indeed in a puddle like a group of ants are there other beings that do not interact with us uh, like we do to ants the puddles might be connected underwater is that the explanation of interstellar travel low-cost excursions or, or other beings from a nearby puddle to ours to do their grocery or field trips sorry a bit disconnected thoughts uh, yes, possible and just pretty much everything he just asked. Uh, you know, do I know where the other puddles are? No, no, nobody does. But I think, again, we're in a pressurized and closed system. And there is there other land out there? Yeah, of course there is. Can we get to it? That's a tough call. Because without a, you know, I think there's places out there that are way beyond our means to get to. Uh, here we go. Uh, next, he, he goes on. Perhaps there is no dome, not a hard one, but rather a soft one, something like an organic membrane that allows osmosis and allows gases to pass through. Mm, I don't know about that, because if, if it does allow gases to pass through, which it really shouldn't do anyway, uh, what are we talking about on the outside? Is there a pressure difference between the inside and the outside? Remember, if it's, if it's, a, 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 it's a soft membrane, why, why would you have a soft membrane at all? As a matter of fact, what, what would be the point of it? Because if you're talking about a vacuum of space, how does the vacuum of space not rip off the atmosphere? Number two, I think yin and yang in Eastern philosophy indicates the flat Earth model. I do too. The yin yang black and white symbolizes sun and moon chasing each other on a flat plane. Have you looked at Eastern Oriental Indian literature? Yes, I've looked at pretty much all of them at this point, And you're absolutely right. I think the yin, in fact, I use the yin yang symbol in one of my slides for strange world <clears throat> excuse me three do did you get any strange events visits in your life and your daily routine since you started to discuss this topic yes i was killed and replaced by an exact replica four shame that the previous president could not take the flat earth seriously did you try the current braveheart <laughs> is that what you're calling donald trump uh, no, we haven't contacted him directly. I'm sure he is aware of it. He has been very careful not to mention it. And, you know, maybe they're doing that deliberately to not have any comparisons to Obama, to try to omit certain things that maybe Obama said. Remember, this is a Republican-Democrat type thing, and maybe they're going out of their way to make sure he doesn't parrot anything that Obama used to say. Number five, how can you prove this once and for all? set up a balloon with a camera well we're working on it please reply with your time permitting wishing you all the very best for the year 2018 and that's from brown smith thank you brown it's awesome this one's called throne of god paper hello mark i heard your discussion with the air traffic controller named dale 
on your show. I must say that I like the show a lot. It's the first episode that I've heard of, and I'm listening to more as I write this email. Back to the reason for the email, though. Would you be able to send me a copy of the paper Dale was referring to? I appreciate your time. Thank you, Robert. Yep, if anyone wants that paper, again, it's not light reading. Uh, I've got it sitting here on my desktop. It's called Harmony. I know he mentioned it's called Throne of God. I don't know why he didn't uh, rename it. But it's called Harmony, and it's six megs. I can shoot it to you through email. I have to do say, oh, yeah, can I give, send me the Throne of God or Harmony, whatever it is. Just email me, and I'll, I'll shoot it to you and have fun with that. Uh, th- honestly, it, like, will put you to sleep. You want some, something that will put you to sleep before you go to bed. I'm not criticizing. I'm not saying it's a badly written thing. I'm just saying it's pretty heady stuff. This one's called Lake Monster. Okay. Hi, Mark. This is Art, the retired magician in Las Vegas. I know you don't care to get into other conspiracies about other than Flat Earth. Uh, no, I, I look at good conspiracy. Remember, I was into just about everything. But the other day you mentioned the Loch Ness Monster with a guy in Alabama. Just wanted to tell you a very true story. Oh, good. Loch Ness. Nor- well, let's, let's read it, shall we, kids? Just wanted to tell you a very true story that my wife experienced at Lake Millerton in California back in 1975. I'm only writing you this as I know you are a curious person. Millerton Lake is not far from Fresno, up in the mountains, not real high mountains. My wife and I camped there for three days. We had a beautiful spot looking down on the lake. It was midweek, and there wasn't another soul there. It was a beautiful, clear day, no wind. I should have, like, creepy music playing in the background. The water was like glass. We were actually looking at the water when all of a sudden this head comes up, maybe three feet. Then as it goes to dive, this huge back rounds up out of the water. Seriously, it had to be every bit of 25 feet in length looking at the back of it. Naturally, we wanted to scream out, out, uh, scream out, look at this, but there was no one there. (laughs) No, we weren't drunk or really high. Well, it is California, as you know. But as you can imagine, we were in shock. This thing made quite a wake. As we were ready to go back home to L.A. in Hermosa Beach, we decided to gas up. There was a log cabin, a little store with a pump. I filled up and went to pay. Yes, in those days, you could still do that. I paid, and as I got to the door, there was a bulletin board with several news clippings. The clippings read San Francisco. A couple sees monster. There were four other clippings similar in reading to this. I was so glad I had gone in there, or I would have always wondered, did we really see what we thought we did? What's kind of strange, this is a man-made lake. Go figure, I've only told a few people over the years, but some ten years ago I met a guy who grew up in Fresno. I asked him if he ever heard such stories, and he said he had heard such things. Uh, all his life. Thought you might find of interest. I've attached a photo of the exact spot where we saw this. Love your work. Listen to listen to you every day. Art. Uh, thank you very much for that. And yeah, I absolutely believe in that in that stuff. The Loch Ness. I I, I do. At the same time, I kind of treat it. You know, if it's a simulation or a um, uh, some sort of manufactured reality. I treat Loch Ness Monster and Bigfoot kind of like treasure goblins. And if you're not a gamer, you're not going to know what that is. But it's a it's something that's put in to add intrigue that is very, very hard to, to catch, if you can catch it at all. Uh, usually they're just put out of out of arm's reach, sort of like the carrot in, on the stick type of thing. And they're, they're, they're a great mystery, and I love them, but do I believe in them? Yeah. Yeah, you bet I do. There's there's too many sightings over the years in too many different places. The Great Lakes, you know, Loch, Loch Ness over uh, in the UK, uh, places in, in Europe. There's there's all sorts of fun places where these... But being a man-made lake really adds to my uh, adds to my theory, though. I'd never read that before, where that it, that it could be some sort of uh, manufactured thing. Because if it's a man-made lake, where the heck is this thing coming from? Most of those lakes are not very old, and where would this thing would have grown up from? Where would it... Would, you know, unless it was dropped in by another civilization. Make sure it's fun fun to think about. This one's called Merry Christmas. I know I'm I'm getting through these, so don't bear with me the holiday ones. Uh, hey Mark, I am a subscriber to a lot of sailing channels, and one of the biggest S V Delos just announced a circumnavigation of the North Pole coming soon. They have never mentioned any flat Earth comets before, but I thought you might find this mentionable. Have fun. Yeah. That's from Israel, Israel Adams. And yeah, yeah I mean, uh, I have not really gotten that much stuff from sailing people, believe it or not. Uh, believe it or not. Short of my cousin, 
who thinks I, I'm completely out of my mind because she was a professional yachts person her whole life. I was going to say yachtsman, but that sounds sexist. Uh, she did professional yacht racing pretty much her whole life, and she finally took her a while, and then just recently she, she came at me and, and called me an idiot. And it's like, all right, fine, whatever. This one's called Rent a Plane for an Hour to Use the Gyros for Testing. Mr. Sergeant, Wolfie6020 has tried to debunk all the gyro experiments. Just had an idea. I don't know much about planes, but a Cessna rental for an hour is $100 here in Portland, Oregon. Could this be a simple experiment to prove there is no rotation? Thanks, Jun, J-U-N, Jun, 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 whatever. The, yeah, look, don't rent a Cessna. I mean, we've already done a whole bunch of subject matter experts on Strange World, and a number of them were pilots, including, uh, check out the the flight instructor out, I think it was Iowa? I think it was Iowa? I don't think it was Indiana. I think it was Iowa. And he owns his own flight instructor school, and he could tell you, he he went on record along with other pilots. In fact, we've had a whole bunch of pilots uh, recently. It, one that was out of uh, Northern Europe, uh, another a 777 pilot that, that gave his testimony. They all say the same thing. Find me, in fact, let, let's make it more interesting. Find me a pilot that'll go on record and say that it isn't flat, that it's absolutely, everything's wrong. Find find me somebody from, from I understand the academics, but why doesn't a pilot at least come on anonymously and come against flat Earth? We haven't even seen that. It makes you think, doesn't it? This one's called HELP, all caps. Hello, Mark. I hope that you see this email, and I hope you heard my phone call voicemail I left you this morning. It has been more difficult to actually reach out to someone in the Flat Earth community. I am alone in my battle here. I doubt that. I live in Morganton, North Carolina. I definitely know you're not alone there. I am 25 years of age, and I am an upholsterer of a small business named Chaddock. I have a beautiful partner who has supported me the entire time. I took her about half a year. It took her about half a year. But through her own experiences, the Flat Earth and our true origin has become her standpoint as well. We have all been lied to about everything, but allow me to get to the point. I need to speak with someone as passionate as you. I have ideals and concepts you might find very interesting. Please, if you can find the time, please contact me. I need simple assistance and a helping hand. I am a Flat Earth messenger and I have a story to tell. In my life, my work and my position was everything until one day the Flat Earth found me. I was guided to this knowledge. Now this is my life. Wanting people to understand one another as equal, to love each other as we are one. I have a very good way to wake people up. In my personal life, I've saved at least 25 to 30 people's minds from the Matrix and showed them with their own two eyes that they can debunk the globe and all that we are trained to believe. But I'll stop there. I would it would really benefit and appreciate I would really benefit and appreciate if you could get in touch with me and just chat for a bit. That would greatly assist me in my journey. Oh, I've watched so many videos over the past year. I want to hear the people for myself. I need to know that you are real. Thank you for your time. I hope you get back with me. That's from Martin. And you know what? I may have to contact Martin because he sounds very enthusiastic about this. This one's called No Experiment Can Detect Earth's Motion on YouTube. Hi, Mark. Been meaning to write you for some time. I'm a master mariner, merchant Navy ship captain. My line of ships were VLCCs, very large crude carriers. Here's an interesting video regarding our Earth. I would also like to confirm that GPS does work in the Southern Hemisphere. We all we use them all the time, all around the world, and use our sextants to check our position manually also. I reside in India, New Delhi. Yes, I'm a flat earther and in the process of figuring out the L- Havers, Haverzine formula. How a flat surface is calculated to be a sphere. You get shorter distance on a great circle while in fact our surface is flat. Cheers, Param, Param, Paramvir, Paramvir Lakari, and and thank you, thank you for letting me know, and thank you for sending me the link, and I'll you know I'll click on the link just to double check it, and the link is called No Experiment Can Detect Earth's Motion. It was made in November of 2017. Looks like a little bit of a reprint from oh it's from oh oh do I pick you? Yeah, gotcha. I have I've seen that one. Cool. 
This one's called Gravity Substitute. Good morning, Mark. I spoke to you several months ago. I was able to set up an interview with you and a local radio station in Columbia, Missouri. Cool. Where can I find some more information on gravity or the lack of gravity? Will you be speaking anywhere in the Midwest in the next few months? My wife and I would love to come see your presentation. Thank you for opening my eyes, Stuart. Uh, no, I don't have anything in the Midwest scheduled right the second, but my hopefully my declaration of war will, will get some people's interest. I'm sorry, get, let me get back to your first question. Gravity or lack of gravity? Just type in Flat Earth Gravity into YouTube. Those, there's a ton of videos on it. As far as presentations, what I'm really trying to focus on now is debates with anyone in the academic community. I'm, I'm kind of calling them out, saying, look, I don't care what the odds are. You want to put me in front of a panel with a whole bunch of people, five and six physicists, to talk about Flat Earth? And you, you, fine, I, I don't really care. And in front of a hostile audience, bring it what do you got because at this point we're we're having a hard time trying to get anyone to to put their their neck on the line my only requirement for the flat earth declaration of war is that you've got somebody supervising or in, in participating in that's got a master's degree uh, or higher in a physical science that's somebody please come out against us cuz you know nobody likes a blowout and we're crushing science right now we just keep our numbers keep going up and up and up and they just keep denying it. it's like oh it's not a big deal so like you wonder why the problems of the world get so bad and here's it the first response is always denial that is all oh, flat earthers you don't have to pay attention to them well you do yes you do now our numbers are so huge compared to what science science is 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 does nothing plus we're using social media as a as a vehicle and you're not Okay, this one's called I'm in a YouTube comment section debate with Wolfie6020. Ugh, that guy. I, I wish they'd use their real name. Mark, since Wolfie6020 likes to debunk all gyro experiments made by John Savage and Rob Durham, I posted a question to all-knowing Wolfie. How would he conduct a gyro experiment? He mentioned something like, if a gyro hasn't been adjusted for latitude, latitude? and the table vibrates, he is up for an experiment like Rob. Then I pose the question, would a stationary airplane do the trick? It's been about 20 hours. He was responding fairly rapidly until I posed that question. I'm in Oregon, he's in Australia, I understand, but maybe I stumped him. After I pointed out a huge calculation error concerning the lighthouse height, he has been a little more receptive. He's a sneaky fellow, might get interesting. And the video, he sent me a link. To the video and it's called oh no they debunked my lighthouse videos or did they and that's from wolfie 6020 the guy's a joke I, he, like he, okay one he doesn't even list how many subscribers he has because it's amazingly low he doesn't use his real name he doesn't use anything it's like seriously unless in fact i won't even debate anyone now unless they put out their real name you want to be anonymous no no you don't get to do that anymore not and talk to me I put my real name, my real phone number, real email address. I, I'm about as transparent as I get. So anyone that comes out against me, you better pony up. This one's called Globe Conditioning at Target. Hey, Mark, my name is Alex Ace. Alex Ace. It's a great name. From Hawthorne, California. Of course he is. Anyone in California. I wonder if that's your real name. If you're from anyone from California, if they have a really cool name, you got to question it because people name change in that state more than anything, mostly for acting and entertainment gigs. Uh, let's see, I met you. Oh, I met you at the FE Pasadena meetup and gave you the flat earth punt. Oh, great. Now I met him and I already called him out. That ah, doesn't matter. I'm leaving this in there. And gave you the FE pun of the AE map. I'm a longtime listener and share your flat earth clues with my friends and family. L live. I have converted seven people into flat earth believers so far and going for 100. Thank you for all the work you do and your show, Strange World. Keep rocking your interviews like a pro. 2018 is our year to awaken the masses. P.S. I was at Target with my girlfriend shopping. And what do you know? A globe in the background on a poster for kids' shoes. <laughs> yep. Yep, they love that globe. Love it. And in fact, it's really weird. I catch it so many times now in movies and television shows. The older ones, newer ones, there's a globe in just about every movie and television show you can ever think of. It's in there somewhere. In, in fact, it doesn't even make sense why it would be in there. In fact, I, uh, the cop shows is what throws me. Find a cop show. And, like, there's a detective. Been there in the force 10, 15 years. There always seems to be a globe on top of the freaking filing cabinet. 
I don't know why. Oh, well, I do now. Anyway, uh, it's just sad how deep the programming really is. I've added a pick, and he sent me a pick to the Target store, and yep, buy one, get one, 50% uh, off, and yep, there's a globe in the background on the wall. You know, and yeah, rulers, it, of course, it's a, it's a fact, it's a really a symbol, a generic symbol of education is what it is. This one's called, Are You Still Around? Mark, I watched your video on accident two years ago, and I can't prove the Earth is round. I worked at NASA as an IT tech for two years. Agree completely. Keep up the good work, sir. Thank you, Stephen. And yeah, I wrote him back and said, yes, I'm absolutely still around. And again, he's one of those guys that uh, watched a video and then, for whatever reason, didn't subscribe to my channel. Please do subscribe. And if you are subscribed, make sure you're still subscribed, because YouTube has gone through a lot of changes recently. And I hear rumors, but I'm not going to accuse them of ever pulling my subscribers off. My, they just keep going up, so which is great. I mean, not a huge, monstrous pace. Maybe one day it will happen if, if somebody in the celebrity world endorses me. Don't know who that would be. Like, if Kyrie Irving actually said, Hey, check out Mark Sargent's channel on YouTube. Wow, that would be great. Somebody message him and actually ask him to endorse somebody. I know B.O.B. endorses Eric Dubay. I, I totally I under, I get that. I know why. I'm not going to get into it here. But I wish Kyrie would, Irving would, would endorse somebody. And if it's not me, that's fine. I just wish he'd pick somebody. Because it would really help. Uh, this one's called Impact Crater. Mark, have you ever looked into this? It must be the biggest crater in the world unless there's one underwater. Can't find a video addressing it. Interested in your input? Peace out, Eric. And let me click on the view thing here. And Hudson Bay. Oh, yeah, the Hudson Bay sort of curved thing there. And yeah, it's, I mean, the, the biggest crater that they think is out there is the Gulf of Mexico. They say the Gulf of Mexico is just one big crater. And people say, well, you know, do these things happen when a civilization is actually around? Or I don't think so. I, I used to think that, but, you know, like what killed the dinosaurs type of thing. But I think that between versions of civilizations or life forms, life form matrixes, whatever, that's when you start doing the terraforming. You don't have to do it while the life forms are on fire. In fact, it's probably detrimental if you do it while the life forms are there. You kind of got to wait between groups. It's like, you know, everyone leaves the class, then you go and start moving around the desks. That makes sense? Hopefully it does. This one's called, I hope this gets through. Mark, with so many questions and answers, it is not plausible to imagine both an east and west magnetic field to either cooperate with the north or south or work as an, a subsidiary forces to the two existing forces we do know about. Also, our 3D sight depth of field is only limited to the space that exists of the distance between both our eyes. I don't know if I understood either of those two sentences. If our melon heads were three times their size and our eyes were more than a foot apart, imagine the parallax possibilities. Just a thought. Thank you, John Krauss. I, I don't know how to respond to that. I, I don't, so I'm not. Moving on. Questions. This one's called Questions. Hi, Mark. I trust that you are well. I'm not sure if you will get this or let alone respond, but I figure I'll give it a shot anyway. I've always been one to research and look at things from a factual evidence-based perspective, but you are right. The Flat Earth has been one I dismissed a few times, but it seems to just keep coming back, so I have some questions if you don't mind. It is sounding more and more convincing and feasible, but I still need some answers. One, what holds it up? What holds up the Flat Earth? Wait, wait, hang on here. I'm reading Flat Earth. What, nothing, nothing. It's it's sitting. You're probably asking, where is it sitting? Uh, it, it's just it's just an enclosed system. Wherever it's sitting, I have no idea. It could be on God's desk. Two. Why don't people or anything fall off of the four walls, outer limits? You just answered it because it's got four walls. It, if it's enclosed, then they're not they're not going anywhere. They're going to run into the outside of it. No one gets to fall off anything. Three. Are you saying there's no other life forms outside? Solar systems, galaxies. Uni, dual, tri, omniverses, etc., aliens, etc. Uh, if I think of any more, I'll let you know. No, I'm not saying that at all. As a matter of fact, I, I know there's other life forms involved in this thing. The question is, are they locked in with us? Are they part of older civilizations that have to go underground or in another dimension when, when their time has come? Or, the, or are they outside? Are they part of other puddles, other enclosed systems outside of this place? Uh, I believe that they're out there, sure. But the question is, can other groups outside of here come through the dome? That I don't know. That's a toss-up. 
But as far as solar systems, galaxies, no. No, when you go into a planetarium, are, do you see solar systems, galaxies, that whole thing, stars? Yeah, planets, sure. Can you land on them? No, you cannot. It's because they're just part of the display. All the world's a stage, and you are in it. This one's called... We got time for a few more. Do shooting stars prove the flat Earth? Hi, Mark. I'm always looking for flat Earth proofs and have been contemplating the nature of shooting stars for some time now. I have seen hundreds, if not thousands of them, and the one thing that all of them have in common is that they originate higher in the sky than the, where they terminate, or they always travel towards the horizon from somewhere overhead. Everyone I have asked so far agrees that they have never seen one shooting upward. Hmm. Presumably, there should be many shooting stars that originate in my hemisphere, ball earth model and terminate in the southern hemisphere in those cases the sky viewer damn email hang on one second uh um, southern would see the ss coming up from the horizon and moving overhead until it burns out or escapes the atmosphere and moves on the opposite would be true for a shooting star that originates in the southern hemisphere that travels into my hemisphere which i have never seen therefore unless people in australia or anywhere in the southern hemisphere see stars shooting upward which i'm sure they don't there is a major problem for the globe model proponents to try to explain this regards lane absolutely right not, not just shooting stars, but even stuff that's lower, like planes. You know, planes coming over the horizon, big planes. You should see them, like, when they come up over the horizon, they should be looking like they're coming more or less straight up over the horizon. We do not see that. And when they're leaving our horizon, uh, field of view, eventually you should see them kind of nosing down, like they're, like they're crashing. If you, if you have binoculars and you're looking far enough into the distance, we see the exact opposite. <clears throat> which is they just keep going straight off into the distance. They don't look like they're angling down or up ever. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth Meetup Denver. Hi, Mark. I just realized I missed the meetup in Denver. Bummer. I live outside of Colorado Springs. I'd love to get involved with any local meetings and whatnot. Please let me know how I can be notified of local meetings and events. Thanks. God bless Jimmy. And I wrote Jimmy, but I'll let you guys know as well. If you want Flat Earth Meetups in your area... Uh, the easiest way is just type in flat earth meetup and or, and a city near you or a, a large city near you hopefully and it'll it'll show you what's out there in youtube what meetups have happened but if you want to do one on your own it's very very easy just pick a restaurant a bar a mall a park whatever you feel like and you send you know you put something out there in uh, in youtube now if you want me to use you want me to promote it for you? Happy to do it. Just send me the name uh, of the place you're going to do it, the the major city, and the, the, you know the, the details, the time, and, and that sort of stuff, and, and contact information. Very important because people will contact you. They'll email you. They'll call you and say, "Okay, what do I need to bring?" Or you know, what where what exactly is the place we're going to? Blah, or whatever suggestions. It doesn't really matter. And I will put it up on my channel if I can. And I've done a whole bunch of trailers for a whole bunch of different cities. Uh, repeats on top of that in both here and abroad and they've worked out really great so if you guys want to do it by all means again you don't have to wait for somebody else but if you're curious what's been happening in your area type it in into youtube and, and you'll you'll figure it out all right we have time for a couple more this one's called advise mark hope you get this i listen to your videos a lot the last three months i'm in houston while in a shelter youtube was the only <laughs> real television found you and eric dubay by chance while listening to a great video about the illuminati it then looped into eric's video then i found your stuff and listened every day my question is one i have not heard you give attention to maybe i have just not listened to enough here goes i have an eight-year-old very smart son how do you recommend teaching flatter to the children still going to school looking at the globe I want him to know the truth early, yet I do not want negative results from the school. Um, there's not too many flatter things that are out there for kids. There was one, in fact, I should probably look it up real fast. Only stay with me for one second. I will see if I could find. There's one, I, I, as I'm doing this, I'll recommend to you that if you want to check out something, go to type in flat earth shortlist for new people let's see if this thing is still there the the one the closest thing we had for kids there 
It was called, let me see if I can find it here. Anyway, Flat Earth Shortlist for New People has, is a great intro for just about anybody. There's 24 different videos in there, all from different people. And I, oh yeah, the, this, this one's actually the best for kids. If you, usually women respond, the, the demographics, uh, the, the kid interaction thing does better if it's a female presenter. And one of the best female presenters that I ever ran into, is for, especially for young people, it's called Flat Earth for Beginners, Hold On to Your Hat, The Earth is Flat. She, it was by Fran Anderson. She did it at the very end of 2015, or not the very end, but close. Uh, it's got 200,000 views right now. It's scoring 2,000 to 1,000 pro versus against, but that didn't surprise me considering when she released it. It's 54 minutes long. That's a good one for kids. It's 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 pretty good. I I don't know if it's if it's necessarily a, if they're under ten, it still may be a little deep. And in this case, your your kids eight, but it's not bad. Uh, let's do. Can we do one more, or should we end on that one? Yeah, you know what? Let's end on that one. So anyway, if uh, again, I highly recommend if anyone's trying to convert people, to just type in flat Earth shortlist for new people. And there's a whole bunch. In fact, the, the lead video right now, I've changed it back to uh, Marty Leeds. Marty Leeds has a, a the, he's a great intro video and I highly recommend it. But if you have questions and you want them answered or at least read out here to, so that people can kind of get exposed to what questions are out there, please email me at msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And I will read them and respond the best I can here. And until next time, guys, stay flat.